everybody i am dr manoj kumar from mumbai and as you can see i am an ophthalmologist and i'll be sharing my experience with you i do not have any financial qualifications okay uh, since dr santil is traveling and he's busy somewhere he'll be joining us soon as he told me and we decided that i'll keep my talk uh, on mutual funds specifically mutual funds and uh, make it uh, uh, very simple though it is very exhaustive topic but we thought that we'll keep enough time for question and answers because a lot of you a lot of the audience may not be much well versed with the mutual funds so i'm going to keep it basic simple uh, though there'll be a lot of technical stuff also and i will leave enough time for as many question and answers as you all want okay so you are free to ask any questions you do in feed i may not be able to answer all of them but i'll try my best to solve your problems okay simple thing is that a few initial slide before we go to the actual topic is that whatever seed you 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 plant you will get a, you'll get that kind of a plant or of or a fruit so if you if you choose bad investments you will get poor or bad returns if you choose good investments good type of investment which suit you then obviously you will get good returns which will make you happy okay and another thing is that if you don't make major mistakes if you can avoid the major losers then the winners will take care of themselves okay uh, this is uh, my wish that everybody all of us whether you are an optimist or not try try to use as much indian stuff as possible thank you okay and now before i start i have to thank sri dhendra kumar he is a ceo of value research and uh, what i am talk to you is most of this knowledge is from his ideas his thoughts his readings his speeches his talks and his articles rohit modi is the one who started since rohit was the was the presenter to us in the beginning Uh, Rohit was the one who started, who encouraged me or motivated me to start taking these sessions. Since about like five or six years now, uh, we have taken quite a few uh, offline sessions in Mumbai, and uh, since the pandemic came, we have started taking online sessions also. Okay, and uh, uh, they have all been uh, pro bono so far, except for the third one, Doctor Senthil, for taking for uh, inviting me to be a part of the session with you all, and uh, all the audience people like you who have encouraged me in the past. to continue with this motivation which we have uh, as i said before i am an ophthalmologist i am not a financial person so whatever knowledge i'm going to give you is from my personal experience uh, reading experience i have made mistakes i have learned from them and i have learned from the question answers in the past from people like you okay and uh, whatever feedback you have you could you could pass it on to me whether they are critical poor bad appreciating everything is welcome it will hopefully make my talk better in the future okay now uh, early bird gets the worm okay so make please make a habit of getting up early okay i get up around 4:35 am every morning irrespective of the day sunday or whatever it is and if you start doing it you will be disciplined you will have a lot of time in the morning to plan yourself to do a lot of things which in the day you may not be able to do all of us have the same 24 hours saying that you are busy doesn't cut ice okay and don't procrastinate okay so don't keep your investments for tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow i'll do it next day i have to read i'll do this now please don't do that start doing it today okay now uh, before uh, you get scared of investing i hear people saying that we our income is hardly anything what will be save how will we invest so i made a simple slide for you all to understand that's not so bad okay so let's say that whatever your income is and if you can save about uh, uh, let's say you can save about 25% of that okay per year or every month and you get a decent return of 14% of 14% as a decent because a sensibly chosen mutual funds will give you at least 17 18% if not more than that okay so 14% i have taken a safe figure okay so if you invest 25% of your income every month and if your income increases you keep on increasing proportionately your investments in mutual funds then after 20 years believe me the returns from your investments will be much more then your income at that point of time okay shocking okay i'll repeat so if you invest the way i tell you the, this then after 20 years of your investments the yearly return from your investments only the returns not the principal amount at that point of time your returns at that point of time after 20 years would be more than your income at that point of time and the income has been growing by 5% every year okay this is just to show the slide we can not go into the details that will be the gist of the slide okay another example look at the look at the red box below okay so if you want to to save let's say to if you tell somebody that uh, you need to, you can you make 2 crores and you say 2 crores is a huge amount it's in your dream nothing big 
So if you save about 16,000 rupees a month, okay, for 20 years, trust me, you'll have two crores US after 50, after 20 years. Okay, look at this box in the bottom line. If you're five crores, depending on that, so this is what you'll get. And this way taking a return of about 15% per year, which is each easily achievable. Okay, the, the equity mutual funds over the last 30, 40 years have given approximately 70 to 18 or 19 percent per year. Okay, so you will easily get 14, 15 percent per year. So there's nothing to worry about. Okay, don't get scared. The another example where we've compared the returns of the mutual funds, which is Sensex, the basic broad index, with the other types of investments over the last 30 years, and you can see the figures. Okay, gold and fixed deposit, dollar PPF, all are beaten hollow. The mutual funds in the equity funds will give you a fantastic which at least 10 times more than what you would have got in other investments. Okay, as an example, this is one of the paper ads from a mutual fund called as an Ipin India Growth Fund. And it has given you 200 times growth in 20 C. This is just one example which I've chosen to show you all. There are many like these. Okay, this is given about 20, 200 times. So 1 lakh rupees invested has grown to 2, two crores. That's it. One time is 1 crore has become 2 crores in 20 years, 26 years. Okay, and if you compare fixed deposit with a mutual fund, like an example, then if you see that you put in 10 lakhs about 10 years ago, then today your fixed deposit would have been about 23, 23 and a half or 24 lakhs. Your mutual fund would have been about one crore. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Warren Buffett's name will come frequently in our talk. He's supposed to be the number one investor in the world. And uh, he had some rules. His rule number one was never lose money. Rule number two was never forget rule number one. And don't look at others. Don't look at what others are earning, what they're earning, what their practices. Lead your life the way you want to. It. Don't copy others. Okay, now let's come to. Excuse the... me, doctor. Yeah. Yeah, little louder or voice, little more sound. Okay, once I just try to use the headphone, just give me a second. I will see if it makes a difference. Is this better now? Now it is lower than that. Okay, one second. Okay. Speak a little louder. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay. Okay. The mutual funds is what we're going to now. Okay. Now, mutual funds are a simple uh, vehicle where you can invest depending on your goals and you can make it as difficult and as complicated as you want. Okay. It's very simple and you can choose different modes. See, mutual fund is just a vehicle and there are various roads leading to it. Okay. Uh, now, what are mutual funds? Okay, now mutual, the word mutual means for everybody's benefit together, something like that. Okay, so in mutual funds, what we have is that we have a fund manager or the, the sponsor company and they launch an asset management company in India. Currently, we have about 45 AMCs or asset management companies and they will launch a fund. They'll appoint a fund manager to take care of the fund and they will say that this fund of ours will be doing X, Y, Z. So let's say if it's an equity fund, then they will say this is an equity fund and then they'll say that it's a large cap fund, for example. So they will say that this is an equity large cap fund. So the money will be invested in those kind of securities only, nowhere else. So if you feel that that fund appeals to your site, it appeals to your uh, investment pattern, etc., then you will give money to that fund manager or to that fund and they will pool the money from hundreds and thousands of people like us okay, as investors and the money will be invested depending on their expertise and professionalism and the fund will go. The, the fund grows as they, as they buy the securities, the value of the securities increase and that's how our investment value increases. That's how the mutual funds work. Now, whenever we want the money back, okay, we tell the fund out that I want X amount money back and from our investment, whatever growth we've got, that much money, whatever we want is given, is passed back to us. Okay. Now, the current uh, mutual fund industry in India is worth about 43 to 44 lakh crore rupees. Okay. And it is a quite small amount uh, uh, compared to the rest of the world. It's very small, about 6% or 5% of the uh, same investments in India is in equity and the share market and the mutual fund. So, a very small amount. Okay. Now, you have to understand one thing that in mutual funds, when we give the money to the professional manager, he is going to invest the money on our behalf. So when you buy, let's say, a large cap fund, for example, that money, the fund manager will buy about 50, 60 companies, depending on his expertise. 
So we are not buying just one company. We are buying a portfolio or a bouquet of different companies of that specific category. That's very important to understand. Okay. The different types of mutual funds, we'll come to that later on. Just as we have different kinds of vehicles, cycles, cars, etc. Et Similarly, we've got different kinds of mutual funds like equity, debt, hybrid, gold, etc. Et we'll come to that later, later on. Okay. Now, what are the advantage of mutual funds? No entry load. Okay. So when you give 100 rupees to a fund, the 100 rupees will be invested. No exit load. Exit load means when you redeem, when you take out the money, if depending on the scheme, most of the schemes will have no penalty or no exit load. So whatever you want, it will come back to you. And no brokerage. Now that's a, that depends on your mode of investment. If you do it on your own, called as a direct plan, then there is no brokerage which is significant. And if you go through an agent, then there'll be brokerage and they'll be earning approximately 1% per year. It's so a huge amount. Okay. Mutual funds have got tax advantages. They're safe, transparent. You can invest in the name of HUF also. And one of the basic principles of investment is that you should have diversification. Do not keep eggs in one basket. So when you do mutual funds, you automatically get the benefit of diversification. And you can make your mutual funds as simple as you want, as complex as you want. And for a very minimum cost, which is maybe about 0.5% per year on an average, you get professional management with expertise and everything else. Okay. And you can you can put n number of money. You can put crores and crores and crores of money. You can put whatever you want. You can put a few hundred rupees. You can put crores of money, whatever you want. And there are various types of schemes available depending on your risk taking ability. You can have very minimum risk to very high risk. And every scheme is very strictly SEBI regulated. So don't worry about the risk, about those sort of things. You can start with even 500 rupees, which I think all of us can do anyway. It's highly liquid. So whichever, whenever you want the money, you can go online, click on the buttons. And within two days, the money will come into your bank account directly. The, all of them are very liquid. It is very easy to invest. You can do everything online. And the best part is you can, you can buy foreign companies through mutual funds. You can buy Apple, Google, Samsung, Microsoft, okay, IBM. All these companies can be easily bought through mutual funds internationally. Okay, you can nominate whoever you want. You can take loan against mutual funds, and you can do something called as SIP, SW, and ST. We'll talk about this later on. And whatever shares or companies, whatever securities your fund has bought, everything is disclosed by them every fortnight and monthly. So you know where your money is going to be scheme. Okay, and every fund will tell you the, the amount of risk involved in a particular scheme. Okay, uh, I've told you all this. Okay, now, uh, okay, now how to go about it? Uh, see, there is, uh, uh, how to go about is that you need to first understand your psychology. I assume that most of you have attended the first two uh, classes in these series of talks we have. Okay, so there you must have been told probably about the, the mode of investment, which investment is suitable for whom, how, what is volatility, what is risk, and how much of individual can, see every individual has to decide that how much of risk or, uh, you know, your individual risk taking ability you have. Now, depending on that, you would choose the category of mutual funds. Is going to be an equity fund, is going to be a hybrid fund, is going to be a debt fund, etc. Okay, and then in that, you will, you know, each sub, each category, has about five or 10 or 15 or 20 types of subcategories. Okay, so first you have to decide for yourself that you would like to go for which category of mutual funds. So equity, debt, hybrid, or commodities. Okay, then in that you would have to decide among those, like equity has got about seven or eight categories. So, 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 okay. So in those seven or eight categories, which one is going to be suitable to you? I'll be telling to you, I'll be telling to you about these in the subsequent slides. Okay, so, so the second step is that which subcategory of fund you will choose. And then the last category is that which specific fund. Like truly there are 43 or 44 AMCs in the country. So each one of them has got a scheme in most of the categories. So which fund house will you choose? Is it Access? Is it HDFC? Is it SBI? Is it My Asset? Okay, so many there are there. So that's where you decide. And then you need to invest. Now, if you do it on your own, which is, which is what I would prefer, then that's called a direct plan. If you go through an agent, for regular plan, the regular plan, the agent will get a lot of money from your share. Okay, you can invest a small amount of money also. Okay, now something, uh, what is AUM? Okay, so AUM basically is asset center management and this refers to the total market value of the investments which a fund house has. Okay, it's just a figure, okay. And uh, 
If you see the last few years now, especially after the pandemic, the number of uh, investors have increased. More and more women are taking part. More of more of youngsters are taking part. And the SIPs have exponentially increased. That today we have almost about sixteen thousand crore rupees coming every month through SIPs. Okay, now there are about fifty mutual fund schemes who completed twenty five years in in two thousand twenty two. And if you see the return, this is just a random. Uh, this is not uh, specific or any way. And you can see the returns. Okay, these are per year returns. Some of them give you fifteen, eighteen, twenty percent returns. This is over twenty five years per annum. So it's mind boggling. So you see the amount of growth you could have got. Okay. Currently, these are the hierarchy of the mutual funds in India. AMCs, Straight Bank India is the biggest. Then we have SDFC. Sorry, the ICIC has become second. SDFC has become third now. They have changed. This is a two-year-old data. Now we have SBI first, ICIC is second, SDFC third, Nippon fourth, Aditya Birla fifth, UTI sixth, and so on. Okay. Yeah. Now what is NAV? You keep on hearing this. NAV stands for net asset value. It is the value of one unit of the fund. So when you buy, let's say you you give the fund house hundred rupees to invest, okay. So so and they will allot the units. Let's say the value of one unit at that time is ten rupees. So you will be given ten units or ten. Okay. So the value of one unit was the one NAV is ten rupees. You get ten units. Now let's say after five years, the value of each unit or NAV becomes say twenty rupees. Okay. So you still have ten units with you. So total value becomes twenty units with the NAV is. Twenty. So, any anyway, just refers to the value of one unit. Okay. Now, how do you choose a mutual fund? As I said before, there are various categories. Okay. Now, there are certain sub websites which can guide you into this. Okay. My most favorite is the first one, which I go access every morning. I get up in the morning and I read these sites. Okay. That is valuesonline.com. Okay. And the CEO of this is Mr. Dhirendra Kumar. I told you in my first slide. Okay. What I'm talking you is, I would say, practically most of it is from his. Is whatever I've learned from him, okay, and it is free. He's got a mind-boggling site. The amount of data teaching available is totally free. So I would suggest if you're interested in mutual funds, start visiting that site and read. Start reading it. It takes about five minutes every day, nothing much, okay. There are certain publications which you have, which I follow. Uh, one is I will show it to you here. This is the ET Wealth magazine, okay. It is published by Times of India Economic Times Group. Uh, every Monday it costs about eight or eight rupees only. You can tell your newspaper it's on personal finance. You can tell your newspaper man to give it to you every Monday morning, okay? And you can subscribe to it also. Uh, on I do put it uh, on some of the WhatsApp groups as a PDF, so you can look at that also. It's on personal finance, covers everything. And second is specific on mutual fund is the Mutual Fund Insight magazine. I've been reading it for almost what 14, 15 years now. You can subscribe to that also. Digital print, online print, costing you about 30, 40 rupees a month. It's very cheap, but worth its weight in gold. Okay. And once you once you want to transact, once you want to buy and sell mutual funds online, then then you've got certain sites. The first two is which I use. There are many of them. You can use whichever you feel like. Okay, okay just as just as some of the list of them. Okay, and don't get influenced by these so-called influencers on the TV and media, etc., on social media and on the TV channels, etc., etc. Okay. Now, before you, as I told you before, now before you actually buy a fund okay look at the fund house look at its uh, long term track record etc etc and then you can decide which fund to choose okay nfos nfos means new fund offering as far as possible don't buy a new fund all as far as possible go for an existing time tested fund which has proven its metal in the past you know 3 years 5 years 10 years history which is had so you know the pedigree what it is okay now let's come to different types of funds we have Okay, look at the first this the, the first uh, category. Okay, so we've got equity funds, debt funds, commodities, and hybrid funds. Okay, there are various ways to classify the mutual funds. We'll be talking about some of them, the rest are not very important. So let's come to the first one, which is the equity debt, etc. Now, now well, I don't know how many of you know what is equity. So let's say so equity also means shares. So if you choose an equity fund. Then the money will be invested in the stock market or the share market. You go to the National Stock Exchange, the Bombay Stock Exchange, and you go to the Sensex and the Nifty or the share market, etc. So if you choose an equity fund, then the money will be invested in shares. So your money will by the fund manager will put in these mutual funds where the share money will be invested in the share market. Okay. Share market equity equity mutual funds will give you high returns, high risk, high volatility. So if you're investing for long term, then that's the ideal one. Okay. The next category is the debt funds. What are debt funds? 
Debt funds means they like your bank fixed deposits. Okay, so debt funds you will get conservative returns, something like FD returns or maybe one percent more than that. Money is literally more safe, but the returns are I would say poor. They would barely beat inflation. Okay, they would buy, they would buy, they they buy the Jill is government security. They'll buy money market instruments, bonds, fixed deposits, commercial paper, etc., etc. Okay, what is high, third category is hybrid. Hybrid means it, they they'll invest your money in both. So they'll you'll have part equity and part debt. Depending on the ratio, you have different types of hybrid funds and commodities, gold, silver, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so these are the broad categories of the types of uh, mutual funds. Okay, uh, well, if you look at these funds, okay, then the returns you can see the first one, the equity category beats all the other categories very easily. Okay, and this is just a tree showing different types of funds we have. So if you see the first one on the left, the equity funds. Okay, now you can see there are about eight or nine categories and each category has got, see the number of funds, it's mind boggling. India totally has approximately about two and a half thousand types or two and a half thousand mutual funds. Okay, mind boggling. Okay, now this I already told you. Yeah, now different types of equity funds are, there about 11. So large cap, large and mid cap, multi cap, focused funds, mid cap, small cap, valued ELSS, Sectoral, thematic, international, and flexi cap. The eleven categories are there, and and mostly fund companies will launch one scheme in almost all the categories. So you need to decide that which category suits you. So first you need to decide is does equity fund suit you? Then among these eleven categories, which type of equity fund would you want? And then you would come to the last category where your money would actually go is which fund house will you choose? Let's say, for example, you choose the first large cap. And there are about 140 plus large cap funds. So which fund will you choose of the, of the 140 is your last step and that is where your money will actually go. Okay. And this is the how they have to invest. If you take a, choose a large cap fund, then by default or by, by definition, they will have to invest 80% money has to go in the large cap category. Okay. 20% has the, is the extra flexibility which your fund manager has. Okay. Now I'll just tell you briefly what are large cap, what are mid cap, what are small cap. Now India has got the largest number of uh, listed or equity or uh, share market companies in the world. There are roughly about 6,000 companies we have. So if you arrange them on their value from the number one on top and to the lower 6,001, today in India, Reliance is number one. The number one is Reliance. Okay. So and second is TCS. Okay, so so if you arrange them that, then the first hundred companies are called as large cap. The next one fifty companies, that means roll number for roll number or hierarchy wise, one zero one to two fifty is called as mid caps, and all schemes from two fifty one to six thousand are called as small caps. So I'll repeat: top hundred is large cap, one zero one to two fifty is mid cap, and two fifty one onwards are all small caps. Okay, and this is how the they have been categorized depending on the mode of investment they have. Okay. Uh, then you also have something called as active and passive funds. In active funds, the fund manager will buy and sell the funds depend on his expertise and research. In in passive funds, the money will be invested in an index. Now, what's an index? See, uh, there are different uh, companies. For example, you have the Census, you have the Nifty, you have the Morgan Stanley Index, the Smith and Smith and Poor Index. So these companies will make an index, something like that, and. If, if your fund copies that index, then it is called as an index fund, okay? So index fund is a passive fund, but the fund manager has to just copy that and do nothing else. So the, the expense, the returns are good enough and the expense ratios are very less. That's an index or a fund or a passive fund. Okay, now you have come across, you know, some people telling you that this is for your retirement fund, this is your, you got a child, you need to invest, and then they play on their move, and they play on the, psychology of our mind and they will tell you that this is for retirement this is child engagement all this is humbug everything is a marketing tool these are the same funds which will invest in a hybrid fund which you could do yourself and they have a higher expense ratio they give you not good returns okay so don't fall for this marketing gimmick okay now definitely told you what they are okay now there are about 17 types of uh, debt funds okay and i've ticked marked four or five of them Rest one can safely ignore. But remember one thing, debt funds will 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 only be giving you in an, on an average returns which are uh, 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 which are something like your fixed bank fixed deposit returns or maybe a little more than that. 
Okay, that's very important to understand. And they will just about beat inflammation or not. So if you go for a debt fund, you will have relatively safety of your principal, but the returns will not be very good. So we recommend debt funds for people who have got a very short horizon or people who are totally risk but They want zero risk. But remember one thing, no gain, no, no risk, no gain. Okay, poor risk, poor gain. Remember this. Okay, so if you invest in law, and these are different categories of debt funds, you can just skip them. Okay, a simple thing you can understand is very, look at the first slide, the top one. If you invest 100 rupees a day, okay? So if you invest just 100 rupees a day, which comes to about 36,000 rupees a year, is it a big amount? I don't think so, okay? And you invest in a mutual fund, okay? And the funds give you only 12% in fact. 12% return is, is nothing much, okay? After 30 years, you will have one crore rupees, okay? So I repeat, 100 rupees a day, 3,000 rupees a month, 36,000 rupees a year for 30 years, which means you've invested 10.8 lakh rupees and get it on 12%. I told you that you could easily get 70, 80%, if not more. Okay. You'll get one crore at 12%. Simple. No magic, nothing in this. Okay. Okay. So this is not a big amount. Okay. Hybrid will you. So hybrid is a combination of equity and debt funds. And depending on the proportional, you've got different types of hybrid funds. Aggressive hybrid, balanced hybrid, etc., etc. Et okay. And this is the same similar table where this is mandated that this is the way they have to uh, invest. They 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 cannot uh, not uh, uh, they cannot not uh, go anything beyond this. Well, I'm getting some. Uh... Yeah. Okay. I'm getting some messages from Zoom. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, if you look at the actually about the returns, so if you look at the different category of funds, and uh, if you look at the returns and the risk, then you would find this is the something like a graph of this. Okay. So the, on the left side, the lower most of them, the first is seven, eight of them are all your debt funds, okay? And on the top and the right are your equity funds. You can decide where you want to be, okay? Uh, yeah, this is the risk meter. Every fund will have, uh, 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 every fund will have something like a risk meter along with it. So this is for lay people to understand that the scheme which you invest has got how much amount of risk. So look at the lower one, the lower slide, the lower diagram is the current one, okay? Which is, CAB has been very simplified for even lay people to, understand okay now now there are two ways to go about investing one you can do on your own which is called as a direct plan no intermediate no agent involved and second is that you can do it through an agent which is called a regular plan so on your own is called a direct plan and and the regular plan is the one we go through an agent okay now all my investments are obviously direct and as Rohit Modi told in the beginning I would be happier if most of you all do everything on your own okay now look at this slide on the left Okay, in a regular plan, you don't have, you don't want to do, you don't want to do yourself. You involve an agent, agent or a, or a distributor. He will come, he will tell you the scheme if he's sensible, intelligent enough, and then you give money to him. He'll fill your form, do the paperwork, and submit it. Okay, so on an average, the agent will get one percent from your money every year. I'll repeat, he gets one percent every year. I'll repeat. So suppose you've invested one thousand rupees today. Okay, so, okay, so for example, and the direct plan, there is no agent, it's you and the company directly, the MC directly. So that 1% you save is, is added to your return. Okay, I've got some slide to tell you the difference. Okay, look at this. Okay, now the blue one, the direct plan. So if you look at this, so after 10 years, the difference between the two is going to be, be almost 15% or so. so. It's a huge difference. I'll show you some other figures. And this, this is every year. You put in money this year and then you think that's it. No. You, he'll get 1% of your return of your money every year for as long, as long as anyway. He may give you advice this year. You put in money and then you never meet him again in your life. But irrespective of that, he will get 1% of your money every year till as long as the investment is there. Okay? And this makes a huge difference. You may think 1% is, 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 is a small amount. No. It's a huge, huge amount. Okay, I'll show you uh, some of the differences in the slides. Okay, so one second. I'll show you one slide. There's a huge difference. Trust me, 
you can it is better to read up we are all doctors we are most indian people uh, in in the in, in the society okay spend some time on it to do a little research ask some people around and do it yourself the satisfaction and the thrill which you get of doing on your own then when you see the returns believe me it's it's very satisfying okay uh, it, since the pandemic chinese virus started about almost three and a half four years back i have had a lot of people uh, consulting me about these things and i have guided a lot of people from all over country all over the country and and they are doing diet on their own and believe me when i get their feedback it makes me feel so good okay trust me start doing on your own okay now how can you do a direct plan one you can go to those two i don't two sites mf central and this platform you can do there you can register on their online and start doing it or you can go to some of these platforms also they will also allow you to invest direct plan or you can go to the amc fund out directly or you can if you don't want to do all that you can physically fill a form and submit to the various branches of this company you can always courier to them on their offices in india okay uh, now if you if you don't have a direct plan you have to switch then you can switch from a regular direct plan it's very easy you can do it online or you can fill a form and give it to them all right uh, yeah now if you want to know whether you are dad or regular plan how do you do that simple is that look at these schemes you you get this uh, when you whenever you invest you get your scheme let uh, scheme uh, email and look at two things one the scheme name will have direct in order instead of regular there will be a direct return here that's very important and the distributed code etc which you can see on my cursor will be empty okay so how do you know it's agent or not you look at these two things then you know it is a direct plan okay now how do you decide on the holdings of the cat funds two ways you can do it on your own singly or you can do jointly a jointly can be joint or either or either services now i understand i prefer that if possible buy and join names so we see you and your spouse but the the mode of operation should be either a survivor so any of you can do it it is better to do it this way in the long run it will save you a lot of headaches and hassles okay and then you can have a dad and dividend category okay in mutual funds what we have is is uh, we don't have dividend as such what it is called as sorry what it is called as it is a payout of income so what we use is idcw name okay as far as possible all your schemes should be in the growth category okay now this is something important what are sip stp and swp you heard of this my so people tell you mera sip chalu etc etc sip stands for systematic investment plan stp is systematic transfer plan and swp is systematic withdrawal plan okay uh, maybe i'll have to pause mr hari yes sir everything is okay so far am i clear i hope yeah, i yeah, yeah. fine 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 moving yeah can i get some feedback from the audience whether are they able to understand and we'll take questions later on something like that yeah yeah, yeah. after completing this we can take questions okay is is my is my uh, diction and the speed okay yeah little slower also good <laughs> okay okay fine yeah. fine theek hai okay so let's come to these things you know, the systematic uh, there are three types of systematic uh, options we have sip stp and swp okay now in systematic in systematic investment plan what we have is that one second sorry yeah in systematic investment plan okay we this is something like a recurring deposit we have in the bank or a post office where a fixed amount which you choose will go from your bank account directly into the specific scheme you want on the particular day so it is automatic and this is what should be done by all of you all. everybody should have an sip running so that you don't get biased with the market etc etc okay uh, opposite of that is a systematic withdrawal plan where you the third one where you get you you tell the scheme that i want say 10000 rupees every month on this date so from your investment that x amount will come to your bank account directly on a particular day that is swp and systematic transfer plan means you do, you do like an sip but instead of from your bank account the money is transferred from one scheme to the other okay within the same fund house okay these three are very important to do uh that's what is so sip is from you to fund stp is from one fund to the other and swp is from the fund house to you uh i think we can skip this 
this I've told you. Yeah, now you should understand this. That is not how much you earn. It's how much you save. Okay, you may earn a lot, but if you blow it up everything, then you've not saved enough. It's not how much you save, it's how much you invest. It's not how much you invest, it's how well you invest. And it's not how well you invest, it's how long you invest. And it's not just any of this, it is all of these. Okay. Now to invest, I think I told you a little bit about it. Okay, so you can, I said you can do it on your own or through an agent or you can do it physically, you can do it online through various sites, etc, etc. Uh, I could skip this. Now, how to read a mutual fund statement? I think most of us have somebody other have got some mutual investments. So it is something like a bank pass will have your name, your address, your contact details, your bank details, your, your account number, the scheme name, the current value, the how many units you have, the date on which the investments were done, the current paid, etc., the current value, if you have an SIP, are there any locked in, etc., etc. So this is what your mutual fund statement somewhat looks like. Okay. Now what are the returns from a mutual fund? You know, I am very often asked by a lot of people, Ki, how much did your, uh, your, how much returns are you getting, etc., etc. Okay. So, so there are various types of returns which we get. See, the aim of investment is so that our money grows. So how do we decide that there are about six types of uh, uh, of, of ratios are available? Okay, absolute training, rolling, IR, XSIR, and CAGR, which is most important or most commonly used is the last one, CIG, CAGR, and some of them use an XIR, that's called extended internet of return. Okay, so don't break your head of it, head over these. All the all the scheme companies and the lot of every publication will tell you the, your scheme is earning how much. So you need, to, you need not break on that. Okay. And uh, this is uh, some data which I've got. Okay, I'm sorry, the, the, the uh, if you look at the data, this is data of about two years ago, and you can see the data and you can compare gold. And a lot of people have, have you know, feel gold is great. So the lowest, lowest of gold, and you can see time frame on the top and see the difference between the, the equity funds and the gold. No comparison whatsoever, all right? Now, some people ask me, you know, how much returns are we getting? I tell them, I don't bother mainly about it. So I keep a general view of the trends and the lot of all, and all data, all these schemes are available online data, etc. all publications have, where you will be able to find out the returns. Plus every month you will get, you'll get a statement from CAMS, sorry, from CDS or NSDL, which will also tell you the returns you've got in your scheme. Plus, you know, every, it's very easy to get them. Okay. And if you still want it, you can go to the mutual, you can go to the scheme site, and you can see the return which you're getting on the last month, three months, quarterly, yearly, whatever. And even valueresearchonline.com will give you those. Okay. Uh, now, there are certain fund ratios. Now, this is just to make you aware a lot of things are there. But, but look at the black box on the right. What I've written, ignore, ignore, and ignore. Even I ignore them. Okay. There are about 17, sorry, 19 ratios on, uh, on mutual funds. Okay. What do I look at them? I ignore them. Okay, what do I do? What I do is, okay, I look at the value research online fund rating. Okay, now value research rates the funds from one star to five star. And I choose a fund which is for a five star, five star preferably. And in all the five star categories, I look at the returns and the fund house and then make a call on which fund to go to. Okay, so what all these 19 ratios have been factored by value research online.com and it gives us the main you know, the summary or main abstract of that. So we can ignore all of this not required. Okay. Now, if you, if you, if you read some magazine or something, they will try to confuse you by making, to, to, you know, talking to you about technical jargon to confuse you. And therefore they will tend to, so that you go for a agent plan or record because you will, you will not be, you will get confused. What you need to do is ignore all of them. Simple. Okay. Now when to withdraw from the mutual fund, obviously when you need the money, you withdraw. Okay. Just a second. Okay, don't, uh, just don't withdraw because you feel your fund has grown and then you withdraw. Okay, so you will withdraw only when you need the money or some special situation arises. Otherwise, as far as possible, if you have a good scheme, then let the, let, the, let the money stay invested for a long time and don't withdraw. People tell me, you know, my fund from 10 rupees went 20 rupees, how should I withdraw? No, they're confusing direct share equity investment with mutual funds. In mutual funds, your fund manager will buy and sell on our behalf, depending on his expertise. So we don't do that. Okay. If you don't want to withdraw mutual fund for the money, you can take a loan against them. And later on, you can withdraw, you can, you can pay off the loan. So your mutual funds keep on growing. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, if you're confused, so how many funds should you have? Okay, or how do you decide uh, what, uh, uh, how many funds or which category of funds you should have? So it's a small table which we have. So depending on first, the, the horizon, are you keeping for short term, medium term or long term? How much risk can you take? How important is money is, is to you? And for what goal? Okay, so depending on that, this is a simple, simple investment you can take. If, if Is it for a long term? Long term, we say is more than five, seven, ten years. Beyond that, medium term, I would say maybe about three, four, five, six, seven years. Okay, short term is about up less than three years or so. So depending on that and which. So if you're high risk, low risk, and then you decide. So this is a simple table we have. So if you're doing for short term up to three years, then I would prefer going for predominantly debt category. If it is three to five, six years, there may be hybrid categories. So you get a little bit of debt component, less volatility, less risk. And if it's more than seven, eight years, then equity. Okay. My investments, 98, more than 95% are in equity funds for the last 20, 25, 30 years or so now. Okay. Only equity funds. And I've got phenomenal, fantastic returns. Don't bother about the volatility. Don't listen to the uh, the jokers on the TV channels we have. Don't need any magazines. Trust yourself. Do a little homework and just stay invested. Market has gone up, down. Ukraine war, Israel war, Hamas war. This happened. Chinese virus has happened, etc. Et Forget about everything. Just stay invested and go to sleep. Okay. Under second skip. Okay. Now, how many funds? Okay. Less funds. Maybe five or six funds. How do you decide? How do you decide which funds to take? You can, you can decide something like a core allotment and satellite. So core is your main thing where almost 70-80% investment should be done and it's satellite by 20-30% which we can give you a kick to your investments. Okay. Or another way, if you have five funds, like for example, I've got five or six funds totally in my portfolio. Okay. So you can buy flexi fund, flexible have funds for long term, aggressive hybrid funds for medium term, Tax saving funds for ATC if you want in the old tax regime. Mid cap fund maybe one, small cap maybe fund. That's it. Okay. And each fund from a different fund house. So you get different uh, thinking pattern of because every fund house has got its own psychology. So if you do, if you divide, diversify also on the fund house basis, it'll be better. Okay. Now, and if you're in mutual funds, just sit back and relax. Don't worry about the market, market going up and down, etc. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, whatever fund you buy today may be a topper today, but next year it may be average. Thirty, it may be a poor fund. So this is how the funds behave. So no funds stays on top for a long time. They'll go up and down. This is how the market works. So don't worry about it. Okay. And if you got a poor fund which is which is perform, performing poorly, then it's better to exit. Win with the loss if, if you can and buy a better fund, okay? So don't stick to a poor fund because you are emotionally attached to it. Now, this is the funds I have. If you want, you can copy, take a photograph of this or something. There's no magic in it, okay? There's nothing secret in it, okay? These are the five funds which I have. I've got two flexi cap funds, which is the Myri Asset Focus, which I've reduced the holding in that. Parak Pari Long Term, it is one of my favorite funds because one third of the money which you put in, they invest in the international market. So automatically, without doing anything, you get one third of that fund, uh, international funds. You know, it has got Google, Elf, Google Alphabet. That is, it's got it's got Samsung, it has got Microsoft. Okay, and I've got one large and mid cap fund, one mid cap fund, and one and two small cap fund. This is the portfolio I have. Okay, so I've got about five or six funds and across five AMC's. And if you see the ratio, the lower the last uh, sentence below is I've got so of my total portfolio, about 40% is in large cap schemes of, of mid cap about 30%, plus 20% international about 8 or 9%. Okay, this is what I have, but you can choose any you want. Like in mid cap, there will be about 10 equally good mid cap schemes. In you know, so you can choose which I've chosen these for myself. You can choose whatever you feel like. Okay. Now, okay, uh, this is data which I presented in, in February in the BUA conference. Uh, this is about say it's about eight months ago. Look at the yellow box down. Forget on top. Look at the yellow box down. Okay. So at that point of time, my funds had given me about uh, uh, twenty six percent returns. My portfolio as compared to the index of seventeen percent. Okay. Over three years, and over two years, I got thirty three percent as compared to twenty six percent from the index. Okay. Now 
you can i said that you can invest internationally also and you you should nominate mutual funds okay now the one beauty of mutual funds is that there is taxation of mutual funds but it is only when you redeem so as long as your money stays invested you pay zero tax when you withdraw the money you will pay tax at that point of time only amount of amount of the money you withdraw and only the amount of capital gains so so suppose you invest 100 rupees today and it becomes 1000 rupees after 10 years so till 10 years you will pay zero tax now after 10 years let's say you say after 1000 rupees you say that i want to withdraw say 500 rupees for example so you will pay tax on 500 rupees but of those 500 50 was your principal so you will pay tax only on the 450 rupees depending on the tax prevalent at that time okay fair enough okay now and it's always in the hands of the first holder the joint holder is is a joint holder but he has got no uh, taxation uh, taxation uh, on it okay i think i'll skip the the taxation part is a little complicated okay now you can buy mutual funds through your demat account also or you can buy it without the demat account all my mutual fund holdings are not in DMAT. Okay, I bought them off DMAT. But if I want, I can convert DMAT account also, but I kept them separately. I prefer that you have your DMAT account separate and your mutual fund account separate. But your choice, you can do it two in one also. Okay, fine. Uh, can you gift? You can't give mutual funds. Transmission is after death. Yeah, you can you can submit documents and the names will be transferred. Okay, this is the homepage of uh, uh, villageonline.com. Please go to it and I've circled the funds. If you want to know details of any fund category, click on funds, you get N number of data on every fund. Mind-boggling data. Okay. Uh, this is some returns on the show. You can subscribe to it. I, I get nothing out of it. It is my endeavor that if you want to be mutual funds, you can subscribe to it. And when you go for digital, it'll charge you about 20, 30 rupees per month, something like that. You get the whole magazine online. You can do it. Uh, there are sites which you can use for accounting. MF, MF Center is a new one. Okay, and certain uh, uh, mistakes to avoid. Okay, don't let your heart rule your head. No emotions, absolutely. Don't get attached to the market, to the sentiments, what your neighbor, friend, or acquaintance is doing. Okay, decide for yourself. Okay, continue sips, don't stop them. Don't hold too many funds. If you have too many funds, you'll be confused. Don't time the market. I've been buying last 25, 30 years. I have been buying almost every month, every two, three months, whatever money I've saved in my account, I've been buying funds irrespective of the market value. Okay. I've been buying. I bought when the market was 43,000 about two years back. People told me in some of the people told me it is, it is overbought. It is high. Why are you buying now? Not 66,000. So, so in two years, even when I put it 45,000, I've got almost 50 million in two years. So people who are waiting are still waiting probably. Okay. That's the third one. Don't time the market. Don't procrastinate. Invest now. You're already late. Okay. Some myths. Anybody can invest. It's very easy. Okay. And uh, youngsters, even, even your house help can do it. Uh, luckily, not luckily, I would say uh, some of my ward sisters and my receptionist in my clinic and some of the ward sisters in some hospitals, some of the ward boys have been investing on my advice for the last few years. And they are so happy with it. In fact, in fact, one of my sisters in a charitable hospital I go, she was able to fund her son's uh, full college education in 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 an army school in Dehradun uh, from the mutual funds. Okay. In fact, when she, she went to admit him by flight, okay, first time she went into flight and she became the talk of the hospital because she traveled by with her son in flight to admit her son because of the mutual fund investments. Okay. So, okay. And so many things are there. Yeah, I think we'll skip this. Okay. Now this is a data as of about seven, eight months ago. And look at the returns. I've just highlighted them. Okay, so you've got the direct plan, the regular, and the agent plan. But look at the returns anyway. You can look at the agent and see them. Okay, you see the one, these are per year returns. And over 20 years, you see the amount of returns you've got. Okay, without any worries, you choose a decent scheme, put it, and this is what you would have got over the last 20 years. This is these are per year returns. All right, okay, this are the SIP returns. Look at the numbers, the returns percentage wise. Okay, three years returns, five returns, 10 returns. It's, it's mind boggling returns. Nothing can beat them. Okay. And you can nominee. I'll skip this. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Mr. Hari? Yes, doctor. 
Uh, I think I've been, because I've decided I'm going to speak for about 45 minutes to an hour. So I've done that. Uh, now, let's see if people have any uh, if people have any questions or whatever to ask. I think those, what I would suggest is that anybody wants to ask a question, can unmute themselves, ask the question. Okay. And then I'll try to answer. Okay. Rest of them, people can be muted so that we don't get chatter. Sir, one, one doubt, sir. Yeah. Sir, my son has just joined MBBS. He is in the first year. He is not earning. He is a student only. Yeah. Uh, can I start uh, investing in his name? Yes, you can. See, your son is, I think, 18 or 19 years old now. Yeah, he is 19 years. Yeah. So, he's uh, got a pen. That, he's got a... Sorry. So does it reflect the tax on me? Or without no, it does not. Pay? See, the moment the moment is a major. Okay. What you, but, yes, see, but you will be investing from your post-tax income. Got it? Yes. Yes, yeah. sir. So, so, so you, what you, you, what you can do is, you can open, an, you can open an account in his name. Does he have a bank account? Yes, sir. Yeah. So simple. So you transfer money from your account to his bank account. Okay, sir. Okay, and and he invest on his, so he invests in his name from his bank account. The idea is okay. that if you invest from your bank account, okay, then later on, when, because then the redemption will go into your bank account. So it is better you gift money from your account to him, which you are legally allowed to do. Okay. And he invests from his bank account. Okay. So whenever he wants, that money will grow into his account finally. The thing is that, so so let's say he, he needs the money when he finishes MBBS or his PG. Okay. And when he does that, that money can be used for whatever purpose he needs. Since he's a major, he's got a PAN account, PAN number, yes, it can be done. Yes, no problem at yes. all. Okay. But I'll repeat. Two, two important things to be done. Let him invest from his bank account first. And second, I would suggest as far as possible to buy in joint names. The only thing here is that since he's not married, if his is the first name, because most of the fund houses do not allow addition of a name later on. That's a big problem we have. Banks do allow, but, uh, but uh, they will not allow an addition of a name. That's a problem. So what will happen is that suppose he you are the he's a first holder and you become the second holder later on. See, I don't know, I'm just telling you as a personal experience. Later on, when he gets married, he may want to add his wife's name and remove your name. That may not be possible. Yes, sir. Sir, one okay. more doubt, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I if I have if I want to buy oh, sir, sorry. Like and sorry, sorry. And one more thing is since he's young, okay, he's got his whole life to low through, so it's going to be a long-term investment. I would go for an equity aggressive type of scheme. So I would prefer putting it maybe in, in a large and mid cap or a mid cap or a somewhat in a small cap fund. Okay. They're volatile, but after 5, 10, 20 years, he'll be phenomenally rich. Yeah. Continue, please. Sir, uh, if I want to buy shares in his name. Uh, Sorry, if I want to buy? Shares, sir. Shares. Equity, equity share directly. Yeah, directly shares. Then, then you're on the wrong, you're asking the wrong person. See, I keep a track of the market. I know what is happening, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't do I don't do equity directly. I do only mutual okay. funds. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sorry, but sir. You can do, but I'll just give a tip. You, you can you can open his demat account, and yeah. uh, he can buy directly also. He can open a demat account through any DP and, and buy it. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, so thank sir you. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, is there any uh, mutual fund that is investing in? Uh, theme based products, uh, say future based, uh, say lithium or uh, electric vehicles, or is there now? This is the second part of the question is there a mutual fund which is investing in crypto? Okay, so the first part first. So, so there is a category of equity funds called as the, uh, the thematic funds or the sectoral funds. Okay, now maybe I'll just open this is the uh, mutual insert which I follow also. Okay, I'll just, I'll just give me a second. I'll just open and show you. Okay, now in this, uh, there are about, uh, uh, one second. There are, see the categories available in sectoral funds are banking, infrastructure, pharma, technology, thematic, thematic unit, multinationals, energy, PSU, consumption, and ESG. Okay, now there are different types of thematic funds. You will not get a fund investing specifically in electric vehicles. Okay, but if you go for the technology one or the you know the the energy funds, 
okay they will invest in these so so they will be investing in energy funds that means they will be investing in the battery funds the industrial petroleum all those kind of funds okay but one tip i will give you uh, i have no set of thematic fund okay because those funds are going to be extremely volatile very very risky and these work in cycles okay about 15 20 years back infrastructure was boom before the dot com was boom they all went into bust okay but but and if your fund and if you got a diversified fund okay then then if if, if they if they think that an xyz company is going to do well maybe it will lithium or whatever then they would buy that ski fund that buy that company anyway part of your portfolio okay That's but if you for them but general advice is if you want uh, i don't advise buying it let me finish i would advise don't buy i will call for actually try to get it i would prefer that you don't buy a thematic or general fund but if you still want to buy then don't buy more than 10% or so okay now second part was crypto funds i am against crypto i don't advise advocate crypto and so far there are no crypto funds available in india okay but there are unofficial channels where crypto funds as a okay, mutual okay. fund are available sir now na yeah na was hello sir yeah please can you identify yourself and then speak uh okay sir i am dr jayprada yeah hello yeah am i audible sir yeah i am very audible very audible please uh, sir you are telling uh, uh, you are telling that uh, long term you have to hold it on to 7 years sir but at the same time to identify a underperforming uh, fund and get out of it so uh, say for example if i am staying there for uh, first year the returns will be obviously uh, say 5 to 6% only in that case how will i identify an underperforming fund sir so like when to switch or when to uh, switch to another uh, fund that's my question sir see The returns of five six percent is what you would get probably in a debt fund or those kind of thing. An equity fund will give you much much more than that. <clears throat> okay, see if you choose an equity fund, then because equity funds are volatile, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't use an equity fund for three or four or five years. Okay, but by and large, people get scared. They are not able to their psychology or their mental status. You know, they don't have enough experience or don't have they have not been in the market long enough. to take in that kind of variation today you put 100 rupees tomorrow it becomes 80 rupees you say in one day i lost 20 rupees that can happen and mm -hmm. after 10 days it may become 150 so this volatility mm -hmm. is more in equity fund so therefore we say that in see like for i told you that i my my money is only in equity funds i keep on buying mm -hmm. equity funds only those five six funds which i have so so i managed okay, last 20 30 years so i got from this so whatever i put 20 years back that is long term now okay second part of the question was how do you identify see you will need to look see normally we say that you should keep a track of your funds every quarter every three months just look at them okay you can look at them frequently also don't do nothing but after three months just see how is the fund doing how is it comparing to the other funds other category in this you can't compare apple with oranges so if your fund is a large cap then compare other large cap funds with your fund how are they performing and if your fund performs a little less Yes, that takes another year or so because that much variation is going to be there. So if it underperforms on one or two years, then you may think of withdrawing and switching that money to some other fund. Oh, okay. yes, yeah, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so Welcome. much. In yeah. chat box, we are having some questions, doctor. Please carry on. So then, then, you, then you can ask. Then you can ask those questions. Okay. Or or one minute. Uh, let me see. But how do I see the chat questions? Okay. In the bottom there is a chat, na. Sir, I had one question. Don't know the one there. Hello, don't know the one there. Hello, don't know the one there. Yeah, please, please, can you speak a little louder, please? Ah. Oh. Ah, uh, sir, uh, this is Doctor Shilpa. Am I audible? Yes, yeah, Shilpa Singh, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, very audible. Please go ahead. So my question was, I have read at many places that uh, towards the end, like when we are looking towards retirement, when we are uh, investing in equity funds, equity based funds, towards the end we should be making a systematic withdrawal plan and that fund. Uh, shifting our funds towards the towards that, debt that fund. fund. Nonsense. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you. I, my I question was how old. to do the systematic withdrawal plan. I didn't know about that. I know the SIP, but I don't know how to do. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, okay. So first is, see, I am sixty years old. 
ओके ना आई स्टिल डू इक्विटी फंड ओकेटेंसी because life expectancy has increased there have been n number of cases where people have by near retirement go they feel that once you are retired your income is not there you can't play with you can't take risk with the money so you should play safe and you start playing safe and you become you land up in poverty yeah. because because you will not be able to beat inflammation your health problems will increase your expenses will increase right, with time and inflation so much so that what maybe 1 crore today may not be enough after 10 years and you become a poor person okay so right. don't do that continue equity investments okay i'm still right. earning so my investments are on second thing is swp is systematic withdrawal plan is an opposite of sip okay so let's say say let's say today you start stop earning today for example so that let's say today you become unemployed so whatever investments you've got you would need those what did you invest for you invested so that when you need the money in your sunset year you can use it for your personal use that's what the aim of investment is so what you do is let's let's say you want Say fifty thousand rupees a month, for example. Okay, so you you will tell your fund company that I'm on tenth of every month. You know, you, it's online. You can do it takes two minutes and start an SWB plan. So for fifty thousand rupees a month to be withdrawn from my scheme every month on tenth of month. So tenth of month, the fifty thousand will come to your bank account automatically. Now, since we're on to, I'll just say a thumb rule. As a general thumb rule, as far as possible, don't withdraw more than four percent or maximum five. Opulence every year. That means if you do that, then you will be able to enjoy your life forever. Okay, this is a, since this talk is on mutual funds. I'm not talking about retirement, but I give talks on retirement insurance, etc., etc. Right, so one general general rule is that if you don't withdraw more than four or five percent of your total investment value, right, sir, then you will be able to enjoy the fruits forever. Okay, okay. hope you right, have. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. You. Yeah, welcome. Definitely, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Sir, I have one question, sir. Yeah. Um, I am a sixty plus, just now started investing. So. Can you speak uh, a little louder? Yeah, I am sixty uh, now. Uh, yeah. So, you are my age. Yeah, I am my age, sorry, Doctor Mahesh, sorry, from Chennai. No, no, I am saying you and you are my age. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, what about the small cap, uh, mid cap, and large uh, and uh, large cap, which is ideally to invest for us, sir? See, all these three are type of equity funds. Okay? okay. The small cap, I told you, is goes to the small companies which are beyond the rank of two fifty in the market. Mid cap is one hundred and one to two fifty, and large cap is one to hundred. Okay? okay. So large cap money will go to the big companies which are like the elephant. They will grow, but they are not. They are going to be slow footed. So you'll get good returns, but less volatile. Little in the equity fund, little less risk. Mid cap are going to be little more faster growing, little more volatile, little more returns, and small cap is like a yo-yo. Okay, fantastic returns, but like a roller coaster. Sometimes it will be peak and next day it will be down. Okay, but if you are investing for long term, now if you see saw my portfolio, then I've got two small caps because I am investing for long term. I've got small cap funds since last ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty years. Okay, so so if first is if you choose an equity fund, which means you understood that you will not take the risk volatility long term. So what I would suggest is that as a what we normally say is that if you want to divide, then maybe ten to fifteen percent in small cap, another fifteen twenty percent in mid cap, and about thirty forty forty five fifty percent in large cap. Thank you. So that's the way you could divide. Okay. Another thing is, see, we have a large cap category, we have a mid cap category, we have a small cap category, and we also have a large and mid cap category. Okay. So you get both. You get forty percent in each, and We also have something called as a multi-cap category. You could choose that. In that, automatically, twenty-five percent is small cap, twenty-five percent is mid-cap, twenty-five percent is large cap, and the remaining twenty-five percent is random. So, if you want one fund, choose a multi-cap fund. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. Thank equity, you. So go to equity, choose multi-cap fund, and ultimately your work is done. Don't break your head. Okay. <laughs> Or you can choose a flexi-cap fund where the fund manager decides kind of where to put. Okay, but for you maybe a multi-cap fund may be a good one. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank welcome. You. Yeah.
Sir, uh, Dr. Priya here. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, very nice talk. I am actually a beginner. Uh, so, sir, I am going to invest like this month. So, how do I get started, sir? I Okay. So, Have you got any mutual investment so far? Any? No, no, sir. No. Okay. I am 30, okay. 32 years. No, age is not important, but you have got, you have never invested in mutual funds so far, correct? No, I have, no, sir. Okay, so you're a beginner. Okay, yes. so first thing is, so you need to decide. So as I told you, so, okay, now let me ask you a few questions. Okay, yes. are you investing for long term? Means you will, so whatever money you put, I assume you will not need the money for the next 10, 15 years? Yes, sir. Okay, fine, so it's long term. Yes. Are you willing to take risk? Yes, yes. Very good. Okay, and in case the money goes up and down, it's okay with you, correct? Yes. Okay. So, so if it's long term, if you get any risk, then we would go for an equity fund. All right. That's the first thing we've decided. Now, equity fund, since you said you can take risk, then I would prefer you go for a multi cap fund, which I told Dr. Meshwari just now. Okay. Now, which fund? Then you can go to these sites. Okay. Now, I'll give, I'll give you an example. Okay. Let me just see. There are, there are thousands of funds. I'll tell you which fund you can choose. Just give me a second. I'll tell you, see the book which I feel like. Okay. Now, one, one disclaimer what are suggestions I'm giving you? Is from a personal experience, whatever gain and losses you get are all yours. Don't blame me. Don't catch my neck later on for this. Okay. Am I clear, Priya? Yes, sir. Thank you. So I'll tell you some multi cap fund, which I think ICC was a good one. Just a second. Um, yeah. What you can do is you can choose an ICICI Prudential multi cap equity fund direct growth. Okay. okay. ICICI Prudential Multi-Cap Equity Fund Direct Growth. Now, since you have no investments, your KYC would have to be done. Okay. Okay. So, you log into ICICI Mutual Fund and you select this, you, you click on New Investor, then they will ask you a PAN number, they ask you, has a KYC been done? You say no. So, they will, they will do it online. So, what you do is get your PAN, Aadhaar, your address proof, photo, your bank, copy of a bank, Everything you keep it on the desktop. Okay, sir. Okay, so keep everything ready. And as you keep on in filling the forms, they'll ask you questions and keep on doing it. Okay, sir. Okay, that's what you can do. And I would suggest you start an SIP. So first you put lump sum to it. And then within four or five days, your KYC will be done. Your investments will be done. You will receive an email statement also along with it. Okay, go for direct growth plan. And then once the statement is done, you will also have your account on it. Then start start all over again, then log in again with your email ID and password, which will you get OTP, you'll get, and then start an SIP into it. So, okay, and start every month. So you, you, you get an investment and a saving habit. You're 32 years old, trust me, after 15, 20 years today, okay, you'll be earning more from returns than what your income, what you'll be earning that time, easily. Okay. okay. By 50, you'll be able to retire, I think, if you invest a decent amount. Uh, sir, just one doubt. You said the uh, ICICI... Can you repeat that, sir? Sorry, is Priya speaking? Yes, sir. I can you just repeat the ICICI multi ICICI Prudential Multi Cap Equity Fund. So I've just log in that and do what you said, sir. No, no. The name of the fund is ICICI Prudential Multi Cap Equity Fund. Then the options you'll get, you'll choose direct plan and growth. Remember this. Okay, sir. Okay. Can I ask you? Are you married? Single, sir. Okay, so then by your single name, etc., etc., that's the scheme. So you need to log into a ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund. Mm -hmm. That's the side you will go. Yes, sir. Okay, and then as you go, you'll be able to play around. You'll come to know everything. So they, there'll be an option of new investor. Click on that. Then they'll ask you, has your KYC been done? Say no, etc., etc. They'll tell you how to go about it. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Or or if you don't do it, where do you stay? I'm in Tamil Nadu, sir. I'm with you. No, no. Which city? Coimbatore. Oh, it's a big city. Fair enough. What if you don't do anything else? Do one thing. Uh, log into ICI Prudential. They'll be. They'll have an option of uh, their uh, their offices. Okay? okay. So Coimbatore, you can go to their office. Tell them you want to invest it. They don't forget diet and growth. Okay. So you go to their office, fill the form, and give it to them. That's what we was simple for you. Okay. So they will. So they will do the KYC on the spot. Take your Aadhaar, PAN, bank copy, etc. With you. They will do the KYC there. They will invest. And once the investment is done, then later on you can do everything online. So that is a much the, to do the first one physical. That will be easier than doing online. And the subsequent things you can do online. 
Okay. okay. But don't forget you want direct growth plan. That is very important. Okay, sir. Uh, yeah. sir one more doubt. Uh, yeah. Sir, you said diversify the portfolio, no, sir? Yeah, yeah. But but when so, you buy a multi-cap fund, you will automatically uh, have about 60, 70 companies in your portfolio automatically. It's already diversified. Mutual funds automatically means diversification. Okay. By default, you already got diversification automatically. So every scheme is diversified. So in this, like how many schemes should I invest, sir? This is one. one. Just one. one. That's one. it. One. Okay. Yeah. And maybe once you have once you have more money to invest, contact me. Then I'll tell you some more schemes to invest in. As of now, only one. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. Somebody's written here. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, hello, sir. Uh, six okay, years back, I uh, six years back I had invested in ICIC Prudential lump sum. I had put, sir, fifteen lakhs. Tell me the, tell me the name it, of the scheme. Uh, it is ICIC Prudential Multi Cap Fund. Multi Cap Fund came into existence three uh, years back only. No, no, I don't know, sir, which scheme <laughs> right now. I tell I you think, what. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you at home? One second. Are you at home? Uh, I am traveling, sir. You don't have the name scheme on your mobile uh, or something? I, it is an ST, STP, sir. ICIC Prudential. Um, That's I the don't name of the Now Sorry? it is almost, almost double, sir. It is around 29 lakhs. No, no, no. That's but not important. Is, Tell me uh, the name scheme name. Scheme name, I don't know, sir. Right okay, okay, now, okay. okay, what do you want uh, to know? What do you want now to know? The I had invested through stock holding, sir. Okay. Now I want to make it direct. Okay. So it's a regular plan, correct? Yeah, yes, sir. Direct, but uh, after it is like redemption. I have to pay a lot of tax. Yes, yes. See, when you when you shift from a regular to a direct plan, it means okay, you are sir. selling your regular plan and then you are uh, buying a fresh a direct plan. So it is selling one, buying the other ones. So when you sell, you will pay the exit load and the taxation will encounter. But believe okay. me, but when you buy a direct plan and if you keep it for at least seven years, then all okay. that gets recovered and after that's all profits. So I would, if you're keeping for still five seven years later on in life. Then I would suggest you switch, provided you're comfortable with the direct plan. Then go ahead and switch. You should. Uh, yeah, so I'll be beneficial if I switch. Yes. If you keep it for at least seven years plus, then after that is all extra profits then. Okay. So I would suggest you switch. Okay. The thing is, it's a stock holding one. What you can do is, see, stock holding is your DMAT. Okay. In fact, okay. recently, even my DMAT account is even stock holding. But my okay. mutual funds are not with DMAT account. They are, they are separate. What no, you sir. Re is... Rest of my mutual funds are direct. This uh, initially six years back, I didn't know about the uh, So what you can do is plan. you, you redeem that money. You redeem okay. money. So money can bank account. And then since you have direct, other direct investment, then you can buy it the same way. Okay. Sir. Now, how much did you how much did you invest? Fourteen years, uh, six years back, you invest how much? Uh, Fifteen lakhs lump sum, sir. Fifteen lakhs. Oh yeah. Twenty five lakhs now, correct? And now so it is twenty nine. Twenty nine lakh. Yeah. So for so fifteen lakhs is your uh, sorry, fourteen lakhs is your profit, correct? Growth. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So on fourteen lakhs, you will pay ten percent tax. Provide okay. more than one lakh. So out of fifteen lakhs, one lakh is exempt. So remaining okay. fourteen lakhs, you pay ten percent. So, okay. so you will pay one lakh, one lakh forty thousand tax. You will pay. You okay, get twenty nine so. lakhs, fifteen lakhs okay. both. You will pay tax of one lakh forty thousand. So net, okay. net actually what you will get in hand is twenty seven lakh sixty thousand. Invest lump sum in whichever scheme you want. Lump sum, no SIP. Do lump sum investment direct plan. Uh, lump sum anytime or I have to mark right type now. the market sir. Immediate. See because your money is already in through an equity fund, so it is already. Okay. Intercon systemization is long term, six years ago. So no need to do SIP, buy lump sum. Lump sum in uh, what you told, uh, ICIC Prudential Multicap is okay, sir? No, but but you, but no, no. Priya's case was different. You are a different case. You already have an existing investment mutual fund, correct? Okay, sir. Okay. No, but if you're, so hold on, hold on. So, so I'm just trying to explain to you how to invest. So if you, you said that you already have some investments in mutual fund, which is your direct plan, correct? Dr. Namrata, you already have some funds in mutual funds, correct? You already have existing other mutual funds. Yeah, I have in the direct service, HDFC. Yeah, so if so, if those sir. So if those funds, if those funds are good, then you can invest this money in this. I, See, don't buy, but don't buy more number of funds, more than five okay, or six okay. not required. So if your existing okay. other funds are good, you can put this money in that, or you can buy whichever fund you want. But my advice is okay. don't have more than five or six funds. 
don't increase the number of funds. Uh, sir, put more money in okay. the existing funds. Okay, sir. My excess mutual funds are not performing well, sir. Yeah, excess was doing brilliant. All excess funds were doing very well till about two years back. Last two years, their performance has gone down. That happens. Yes, okay, even, okay. even in my case, I had two excess mutual funds. I withdrew all the money from them. Oh, so that yes, happens. Sir. So, so that okay. is part of the game. Okay, sir. thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, welcome. Oh, thank you. Any other questions? Sir, I would like to know if uh, we do through ICICI direct.com, are we buying it directly or is See, some brokerage going lot, on? Lot, lot of these, lot of these uh, brokerage houses till some time back did not allow people to buy direct plan. But because of competition, some of them do allow. What you need to do is look at your, you can read your mutual fund statement. As I told you, if the word direct is written, then it is okay. Otherwise, okay. it will be written. So if your fund is say, Let's say ICICI potential large cap front direct growth, then it's fine. Or it will be mm -hmm. regular growth. If it's regular, then the ICICI potential is getting 1% of your money every year. So as okay. I said, so let's say Dr. Namrata, we spoke to her. She's got 29 lakhs. Okay. How much is 1% of that? 29,000. So the stockholding corporation is getting 29,000 rupees for, of her money every year. Okay. Have you understood this? For doing yes, nothing. Mm. Okay. Now imagine we as doctors want to want 20,000 rupees a month. How much we have to struggle? She put it six years ago, but that stockholding SSCIL is getting 30,000 rupees every year for doing nothing. Is it criminal right. or no? Every year they are getting it. Dr. Namrata, have you understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sir. <laughs> no, now back I wanted to redeem it, but I was scared of the taxes, sir. So, 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 as I said, so you'll pay tax of 1,40,000. So, past okay. year, within five years, the commission is you have saved. So, you recover that money anyway. Okay. 3,000 per year okay. is the commission you're paying. So okay, that, you will save, that you will save every year, no? Yes, sir. And then after that, 1% is what you'll be earning. So, 30,000 every year extra you will get. Imagine that okay. compounding over 10, 15 years. It is a mind boggling okay. figure. Mind boggling figure. Okay, okay sir. Yeah. 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 I can just I can see the names of some of my students on the chat box. So good afternoon to you all. Good evening to you all. Any other questions? Any doubts? Good evening, sir. Yeah. So Dr. Sh Shubham here, sir. From from JJ. Yeah, bolo. Uh, sir, most of us have uh, invested from applications like Grow App. So, sir, as you suggested that we, uh, they have the brokerage thing. So, shall we switch over to uh, the no. website? No, no. But but you need to check whether it's a regular or it must be a regular plan. Yes, a regular plan, sir. Yeah. So, so as I just said, the grow the, the grow people are getting one percent of your money. Okay. Yes, sir. It's yes. better you donate their money to the department. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 so sure we should. Should. Yeah. So, you should, as I just said, you should switch it to the regular, to direct plan. So see some of these platforms will allow you to switch. So you'll be yes, logging to your grow account and, and and click on switch, switch option. Yes. Okay. okay. And so if it allows you direct plan, then switch directly. That's it. You can keep okay. it in grow. And if you don't want to keep it with grow, you want to make it on your own, then you would need to withdraw the money and then invest on your own once the money comes to your bank account. Okay, sir. So, sir, but uh, won't it be a tedious task because uh, task because grow is like just uh, invest and we simply forget. But if we of, uh, invest in our own, then we have to invest uh, like a mode of our time. No, and... no, nothing, nothing. No, it's the same thing. Okay, sir. It's just that we'll be doing our own. That's it. No difference. That's it. Yeah. So, if you want one percent extra, then do it. No, instead of instead of doing time pass whole day, spend <laughs> two minutes once in a while. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, I'm Mr. Renuka, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, I'm uh, 52 years old, sir. But uh, can I start a mutual fund at uh, this age and still move forward? I heard you are 52 years young only. <laughs> What's age got to do with it? You see, got at least 30 years to live. And I think 30 years is a long time. And 30 years is a long time. Sir, if that is the case, like, can you just give a kind of rough idea as to 
how much i start or something like that roughly roughly just I keeping cannot. in mind see, see how much money you have how much you are earning how much you are willing to invest you have to decide how much risk okay. you can take you have to decide i just gave a brief overview of how we decide on which scheme to invest so let's take let's take a okay let's ask me a few questions okay yeah. uh, dr priya was asked the same thing so can you take risk yes okay and it's going to be long term that means that whichever money you put you will hopefully not need it for the next 7 8 10 15 years yeah for 10 years okay yeah. 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 10 years means that you may not need it for next 20 years also you get my point okay, okay. yeah so, so so if you're going to be risk taker like me and a long term then the same mm -hmm. scheme suggests to priya or dr namrata you can yeah. choose one of those schemes so maybe you can choose 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 a mid cap scheme or or you know or a multi cap scheme maybe okay. choose two schemes or you could choose an aggressive hybrid see for a first time user we also have something called as a hybrid scheme which is partly equity partly debt and you can okay. choose a aggressive one so where about 65% to 70% is equity and about 30% is debt so your returns okay. are a little less than equity but then the you know then the yo yo effect is a little less but if mm -hmm. you're like me then i'm i'm, I'm i want yo yo to happen but the more yo yo happens the more red returns you get so if mm -hmm. you think that way then go for then go, go for a multi cap scheme as i told before and start an sip maybe maybe you could as a roughly could take maybe uh, 25 30 if you can save that much 25 30% of your monthly income if you can save that oh. much then maybe choose one multi cap and one flexi cap scheme two good schemes and you can see the ratings on any go to value research or that newspaper at told et wealth mm -hmm. okay or you know and if i have to tell you often then maybe what i have flexi cap could be parak parik flexi cap direct growth and a multi pack multi cap could be the icf potential multi cap or a mid cap could be the the quant mid cap something like that okay mm -hmm. and you divide the money into one third under each three of them direct growth so if let's say suppose these you decide you can say 1 lakh rupees a month for example mm -hmm. and you choose three schemes so put one third in each okay and start an sip of that much amount so it will keep on going every month automatically from bank account for next 5 10 years you can do it and okay. and after 10 15 years okay you will be able to you know stop working okay sir thank you, you sir understood. i hope you understood okay. i got it got always direct growth plan okay always growth direct to yourself regular through an agent but an agent will get 1% and he will be laughing behind your back and on top of which these agents come to our clinic and we feel we feel you know obligated to them we will do them free we will operate them free their family khandan everybody free and they tell us lies am i correct and take yes. advantage of the office and they will give us wrong schemes i have come across n number of agents who know nothing about mutual funds okay believe me we know more than them yes okay yeah thank you sir Sir, can uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Hear Thank you. Uh, what is ETF fund? Is it better than index fund, sir? What is ETF? Yes, sir. ETF stands for exchange traded fund. Okay. Now, now there are yeah. there are two types of passive funds, ETF and index funds. Okay. Yes. Now, index fund is a mutual fund. Okay, which you buy through an AMC, which we discuss all along. Okay. So there you buy it. You you may buy it in the morning, but the allotment doesn't done after two p.m. Okay, so it is it is a mutual fund index fund. Now similar to that is an ETF fund. Okay, but the ETF fund is bought through your teammate account. Okay, sir. Okay, so it, it, the portfolio is the same. Okay, but mm -hmm. the but the index fund is a mutual fund. Okay, bought and sold like a mutual fund, direct and growth plan, direct and uh, uh, regular plan, while the ETFs. are similar portfolio but they are through your demat account and they are and they fluctuate throughout the day okay so if you yes. buy at 11 am it may be different 11:30 it like a share it may go up and down a little bit here and there so it's your demat account that's the only difference both are passive uh, both are passive uh, passive holdings thank you sir yeah welcome huh any other questions sir yeah. are are the index funds good because we have seen nifty rates going up over time see the index fund is what i just told uh, uh, the previous doctor uh, 
Kavita Rani. The index funds are the passive funds. Okay, so we have two main index in India. The Bombay Stock Exchange is the Sensex, and the NSC is the Nifty. Sensex is 30 shares, Nifty is 50 shares. These are the standard indexes we have. So if you buy those funds, then the share, the, the fund house will replicate that index. Okay, so index funds are passive funds and they will give you the returns as per the index. Okay, now the large in, in the large cap category, the active funds are not able to beat the index very frequently. So if you're buying a large cap, my, my personal uh, uh, view is that if you are buying a large cap scheme, then maybe an index fund may be better, maybe, okay? But if you're buying a mid or a small cap, then maybe a non-index may be better, okay? So oh. index fund will give the index returns and they'll be as per the category. That's an index fund. And then again, as I said before, you have an index fund and you have an ETF fund. They are similar in the portfolio. Oh. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Sir, uh, yeah. am I audible, sir? Very well, yes. Uh, sir, uh, STP is better or a single, uh, like... Uh, lump sum. Lump sum. Uh, if you ask, is, is lump sum better or SIP better, no, correct? Sir, sir. Suppose you select one mutual fund. Uh, they do STP, no, sir? No, no Every STP, month. STP is from one fund to the other. Yes, sir. Systemic see, transfer plan. Yeah, yeah. So what we do for that is that see, let's say, let's say, uh, suppose you've got, so let's say you you got a big amount of money to invest, okay? But you feel that uh, some see in an equity fund we normally say then don't put lump sum if the amount is big because the market can go up and down. So we say invest gradually. So invest gradually uh, can be either through an SIP, okay, or through uh, an STP. So. What we say, so if you're doing an STP, then the money instead of your bank account will go through another account, AMC. So what we do is, let's say you want to invest 10 lakhs, for example. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you right can, down, and yeah. suppose you want the, let's say you want the access equity fund. So okay. you can put 10 lakhs in yeah, equity, yeah, access yeah. debt fund. Okay, sir. And from Ooh, there, yeah, the money, uh, sorry, can, can somebody be quiet, please? Okay. Okay. So say, can we have silence, please? So let's say you got 10 lakhs to invest. Let's say in an, okay. in an excess equity fund, for example. So you okay. so you can put 10 lakhs in the excess debt fund okay. and give a mandate to them that transfer, say, 50,000 rupees every month from the debt fund to the equity fund on that date. Okay. okay. So, okay. The, so the debt fund will also grow a little bit by the interest. And in the next 20, 25, 22 months, then money will gradually get shifted to the equity fund. This is STP. Okay, sir. Is it beneficial, sir? View, that is see that is beneficial if you want to invest you got a lot of money but you want to put it gradually then you can put, do that okay. way okay, okay. That is, yeah okay. yeah anything else um, mr hari anything else sir excuse me sir sir yeah. if i had invested through uh, many uh, uh, fund houses. Uh, how to reduce the number, sir? Uh, see, what you do is you first make a list of all the schemes you have and categorize them into whether they are equity, debt, large, mid, whatever it is. So you will know which which fund is uh, which category. Okay, and then you decide that you want your funds, your money should be in which type of fund, how much ratio into that. Then accordingly, you redeem those funds and buy the, buy the so, so you switch or redeem and buy the funds which you want now. Let's say you got, let's say you got 15 funds, okay? And you need to come down to about five or six funds, okay? So you need to redeem at least, you have to exit eight or nine or 10 funds. So what you do is make a list of all your funds you have and then see the star rating. So which are lower star, you exit them. Okay, and then see that you want which funds to be kept. Let's choose your five or six which you want. So which are poor for farming funds, those you withdraw, let the money come to your bank account and then buy them, then put that money in the other existing good funds. Okay, but remember one thing, do this direct and growth plan. So let's say you withdraw, you withdraw from nine funds. So you, from the nine funds money, now you put in the direct plan. Don't buy a regular plan now. Do it on your own. So the money will be redemption. You'll have to pay tax on it but still better than having poor funds. 
So you'll shift to a direct plan and you will have better performing funds. So the money will grow faster in the long run. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Sir, good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Anita from e Road, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, what is meant by the liquid fund, sir? And uh, uh, if Hello, they, sir. Have, uh, yeah, liquid if fund. Have any lump sum? Uh, is it wise to invest in liquid liquid fund or directly as a, a lump sum itself? We we can invest it, sir. Yeah. Okay. Liquid fund is the type of debt fund. Okay. okay. The money okay. is invested in debt category, you know. And liquid okay. fund is one of the safest type of debt funds. So if you feel that you want a debt fund category, okay. So my, I have no money liquid funds in debt category, but if you feel that the liquid for the debt fund category suits your mental profile, then in okay. general, in any debt category, you can invest lump sum because there is no volatility there. Practically, there is, it is very, very rare to get volatility in a debt fund. So you can invest lump sum in that. You can invest as much as you want. Okay. Okay. But liquid fund is one of the safest categories in a debt fund. Okay. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, welcome. Dr. Jay Prada, I think now. No. Uh, sir, uh, uh, are the debt fund and the liquid fund same category, sir? I'm getting confused about it because they say ultra short debt and the oh, no, short no, no. term no, debt. Please, and, uh, hold on, hold on. Please go a little slow. Please go a little slow. Uh, sir, are the liquid slowly. funds and debt fund the sir? Are the debt fund and the liquid fund the same, sir? Because they're telling ultra short, short debt, short liquid. Hold on, hold on. And you, what no, are those, sir? No, no. See, there are about seventeen. The, hold on. the mutual funds are divided into four categories, equity, debt, hybrid, and commodities. So debt fund is a broad category under which we've got 17 types. So liquid fund is one of those types. Ultra short term is one of those types. There's 17 types oh, of debt oh, funds. Oh. Okay. So okay, liquid so. fund and ultra oh. short, all are debt fund categories. I hope you understood. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, which will be ideal to park the money for a short term, sir? Both, both are equally good. If it is for, I would say, about one to two years, three years, then short term fund is good. Smaller than that, maybe liquid, six to nine months, then we liquid fund. Okay, so okay, can you please mention good. a few good? Uh, okay, sir. can you please uh, mention a few good uh, short term so, funds, sir? I would say do a little homework on yourself and go to value research okay. online or CPT Wealth. Okay. Look, look okay, at the sir. look at the four or five star category rating and buy any one of those. Okay. Buy online or yourself. Okay, sir. Because I'll tell you what. See, in a in a debt category, the returns will be about seven percent or so. Okay. And if your agent gets half or one percent of that, it's criminal. Okay. okay See, okay. at least in equity funds, you'd get much higher returns. So, but in debt funds, okay. the returns are anyway negatively very meager, and of that, the agent okay. takes away a big chunk. So, it, I think it's not okay. fair. So, you do it on your own. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much, sir. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Anybody else or should we? Any other questions, doctors, please? People are free to ask questions if they want. So no questions, Anybody they can wind up the session there. So if you want to uh, tell any conclusion or something, you can finally like, finish. Yeah, I think that's it. I think this was, since this was primarily mutual funds, I restricted myself to that and I had to make it as simple as and basic as possible. Okay. I did not go into the uh, details and more advanced things of it. Okay. And we don't look. So I hope people have understood. I hope yeah, yeah. Good, you'll be good, motivated good. to start doing it on your own. And Yeah, uh, very, very nice session. Very nice presentation. Very much useful to the uh, doctors, those who are attended today. Thank you, sir. I thank all uh, the audience. Sir, and uh, Dr. Dr. Nirupama, sir. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, I want to ask, sir, uh, through which platform, uh, sir, it is safe to invest, uh, like Zerodha or Grow and all any other? Practically, platform? all platforms are equally safe. No difference. What I use is a platform called as Mutual Fund Utilities. Okay? Okay? I'm using it for the last seven, it started eight years back. It is free. It has been set up by all the mutual fund companies together. Second is you can use this mutual fund central, MF central or MFC. They're all available online or you can use anything you want. Practically today, it is it is very savvy regulated and, and uh, tightened by, by the laws. Practically no risk of, uh, the no risk of default. Only thing is if it's in your DMAT account, then I don't know, maybe in a rare case, 
but otherwise your money is very safe. You can use whichever platform because because the difference between shares and mutual fund is that even if you bought through, uh, let's say you bought through Grow or Zeroda or whatever, okay, they are just the platform through which you bought. They cannot access your mutual fund money. Unlike shares, if you bought a Reliance share, it is in your DMAT account. There have been cases where the where your DMAT account person has misused your share, but in mutual funds they cannot do it. It is between you and the mutual fund company directly. Okay, so that's one advantage you have. And even if they play around with it, the money will come to your bank account. It doesn't go into the DP account, which occupies in the shares account. So you can use whichever platform you want. But if you want to do on your own, then it's a direct direct plan. Then some other some other uh, platforms do not allow you to buy a direct plan. Okay, so you need to check that. Okay. All right. Okay, sir. So I think we call it a day. I think all of you benefited with this basic talk and it will help you to uh, start your mission journey or take it forward. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Santil Kumar and Mr. Hari and Dr. Rohit Modi for uh, giving this opportunity. I'm from Bombay. So that's it. Uh, sir, another question, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, I have sir invested in three regular uh, growth plans, sir, just six months back. So, sir, what okay. amount of uh, amount will be deducted if I uh, convert it to the uh, direct plan, sir? Okay. So, this is six months. It's short term. So, two things will happen. Most of the mutual funds will apply an exit load, which is about uh, about one uh, percent roughly. So, one percent will go in that. And since it's short term, so whatever gains you get, you'll straight away pay fifteen percent tax on the gains. Let's say you got one lakh invested. Okay. Yes, so, one thousand yes. will be cut for the exit load, and of the ninety nine thousand. Let's say twenty thousand is your gain. Okay, let's yes. assume. So, so twenty thousand to fifty is about three thousand. So, so out of that one lakh, you will get ninety four thousand. So ninety six thousand. Four three thousand will be your tax and one thousand exit load. Something like that. So you'll be paying exit load and you'll be paying fifteen percent tax flat on the gains. But I would suggest you do it and then invest the way I've told you into direct growth plans. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Welcome. Don't be scared of tax. Pay tax and enjoy life. So I think Mr. Hari will stop here. Okay. So I'll stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor, for your kind response and support for our Aftal people. Thank you, sir. Thank you.